Exactly What to Say, The Magic Words for Influence and Impact by Phil M. Jones. Remember back to the magic words you learned growing up? Please, thank you, you're welcome. Spoken in the correct order, they usually got you what you wanted. You could stack them too if the situation were desperate, like a huge helping of unidentifiable vegetables coming your way. You could try, no, thank you, please. Author Phil M. Jones, an experienced salesman and marketing expert, has some magic words that will give you a fair advantage when you want to introduce an idea, persuade someone, or sell your product. Jones believes there is a part of the brain that is intricately involved in decision-making, though we are not aware of it, the subconscious. Activating this part of the brain puts the magic in the words. Most of the magic words in the book Exactly What to Say can be put into one of three action categories. You may want to capture attention, keep interest, and prompt a favorable decision. Capture attention. When you want to present a new idea to your boss or coworkers or clients, you must first get their attention. The way you begin can set you up to succeed or fail right from the start. A gentle and non-threatening opener could be the question, what do you know about? This question sets your client's minds in motion, searching for information on the introduced topic. If they know something about it, they instantly engage and are happy to share. If they don't, the subconscious prompts them that they should know more and they are willing to listen. Another conversation opener suggested by Jones is, how open-minded are you about? Because people want to be viewed as open-minded. This question tends to open them up, even if they aren't feeling it at the moment. You give them a chance to look good, and they give you a chance to present your idea. Another very non-threatening way to present your idea is, I'm not sure if it's for you, but... In this opener, you are approaching your clients to share something that works for you personally and showing concern for them. Their subconscious minds perceive you as being friendly and helpful. Often, changes you may want to suggest are prompted from your own frustration. Consider, for example, a teacher who is very frustrated with the grading program used by the school. It isn't just hard to navigate, but parents have complained about not having access to their children's progress, and scores have been lost. This teacher could do great research and find a better system, but if he approaches his administrator or coworkers with steam coming out of his ears and a you-just-gotta statement, the decision to look into a new program probably won't happen. Better to try the magic words suggested above. Are you open-minded about updating some poor-functioning software? What do you think about ThinkWave? This is a much better start. Keep interest. Of course, keeping your client's interest is key. Any progress you make beyond an immediate, I'm not interested, is positive. Try for a maybe. Maybe means they are thinking, and you want them to be able to envision your idea in their own minds. A child is easily prompted to envision a story with a simple, once upon a time. But for an adult, you can usually invite this process by starting with these words, just imagine. You already know the benefits of your idea, product, or service. You need to help them imagine themselves benefiting from it. You want to activate the subconscious brain so that it creates images or scenarios with your prompting. Just imagine, the teacher might say, teachers with the flexibility to update parents on grades in real time from school or home. To stir emotional connection as well, try, how would you feel if? These statements help your clients project how it would feel to experience future benefits or successes. How would you feel if you could assure parents that they could access their child's grades as soon as they were entered? Sometimes just adjusting a word or two makes a big difference. For example, you have concluded the body of a presentation. You know that questions from your audience means they are engaged in thinking. To invite a good response instead of a traditional prompt, do you have any questions? Jones suggests a slight rephrasing. What questions do you have for me? This minor adjustment dependably yields more response, thus giving you more chance to interact with your clients. Prompting the decision. Of course, the end goal of this process is getting an affirmative decision from the person or people with whom you are working. When you do this, Jones calls you a decision catalyst, more casually referred to as a professional mind maker upper. He offers several helpful ways to move clients toward action. A very versatile way is to construe the decision facing them as three options. The way I see it, you have three options. You should construe the first as the do nothing option. Stick with the status quo and put up with the negative aspects. The second should always be a work laden or expensive option. The third is always what you are promoting, your idea, service, or product. Why the third? There are a number of reasons. Here are three. 
The number three is common in storytelling, from Goldilocks and her three bears to the three musketeers. The number has familiarity and seems to be just right to the brain, so much so, in fact, that it has become known as the rule of three. Secondly, three is an amount we are able to handle in terms of analysis. It isn't too overwhelming, but it doesn't constrain us either, like in a road with only two forks. Lastly, most debaters know that you save your best argument for last. Presenting your idea after two tarnished ones makes your idea shine. Compared to two choices with clear disadvantages, yours is the path of least resistance, the easiest, least time and money consuming, and clearly the best option. You can draw the option presentation to a close with this question. Of these three, what's going to be the easiest for you? For our teacher, the conversation could look like this. The way I see it, we have three options. Number one, we could fumble through with our existing program and deal with parents' complaints as they come. Number two, we could ask the school board to set up a committee to research various programs out there and hope to have something in place by next school year. Or three, we could pilot the ThinkWave program for the second semester and make an informed decision after we've tried it. The teacher has a great chance of walking away from this conversation satisfied. That's the goal of the book. Phil Jones offers over 20 statements or phrases that can move the persuasive process forward in your favor. Whether you would like to call yourself a professional mind maker upper or not, most of us could use a little help presenting our ideas persuasively. In the business world, a simple please at the end of a presentation just doesn't cut it. Perhaps some of the magic words shared by Phil Jones can help.